Baseball Tournament moves into prime time. How you doing, everybody? I'm Chris Roth. Glad you could join us tonight for our Division I semifinals. When these games are over, we'll have our championship game set for tomorrow. Why? Because we set some earlier today. If you weren't with us in Division IV, Cassville beat South Shore behind 19 points, 19 rebounds, and 10 block shots from sophomore Sam Oakey. They will meet Wasaki, a two-point winner over Albany. Anthony Pieper with 42 points, including the game winner, with a second to go. In Division II, it'll be Baraboo, who knocked off Seymour against Rice Lake. Some free throws down the stretch knock out the Cardinals of Mayville. Tonight, we will have for you Sheboygan North and Racine Case. North coming in the top-ranked team in the state. Then it's the defending champs of Madison West against Milwaukee, Washington, the second-ranked team in the state. But first up, gentlemen, North and Case, Ken Syke to call the action for us, along with Bill Graff. North coming in with all the recognition, and Case is going to have to slay the Giants tonight. Case really does have their work cut out for them, Chris. They've got six losses, finished in fourth place in their conference, Sheboygan North. Big team, strong, and number one in the state. And, Bill, yet despite all this, these two teams are pretty similar in their style of basketball. Well, they really are. They both like to use the full court intense pressure defense. They love to run the brass break. It's going to be one of those up and down, quick pace, high scoring affairs. But Sheboygan North has the big guy, 6'8", Nathan Schremeyer. Yes, they do. And again, the way you can negate a height advantage is to keep the play in the backcourt and pressure and pressure and try to turn them over. And Case stopped the big guy, Chris. Well, we'll find out and lace up your track shoes, gentlemen. This will be up and down. Ken and Bill will be back to set the table for us and tip it off after these messages from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Vision One semifinal. Welcome to the UW Fieldhouse for game number 11 out of the 16-game tournament. Division I semifinal, the Eagles of Racine Case and the Golden Raiders of Sheboygan North. The teams are completing their warm-ups. Sheboygan North, number one in the state. Number one pretty much throughout the whole season. And Racine Case, the underdog, 19 and 6. Now for the player introductions and the start to tonight's game, let's go to the public address announcer here at the UW Fieldhouse, Jack Rain. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the 78th Annual WIAA Boys State Basketball Tournament. Here are the starting lineups for this evening's first Division I semifinal game. For the Eagles of Racine Case, at forward, a 6'3", junior number 31, Mike Scott. of Sheboygan North. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 31, Chad Renzelman. For Racine Case, a 6'2 junior, number 33, J.R. Smith. For Sheboygan North, a 6'3 senior, number 35, Steve Dahmer. In the middle, for Racine Case, a 6'3 senior, number 45, Jay Hearn. For Sheboygan North at center, a 6'8 senior, number 51, Nathan Schremeyer. The guards, a Racine Case, a 6'1 junior, number 21, Carlos Butler. For Sheboygan North, at guard, a 6'1 senior, number 3, Brad Volko. For Racine Case, a 5'7 junior, number 13, Yusuf Abdullah. For Sheboygan North, a 6'2 senior, number 25, Mark Schmidt. The Racine Case Eagles are coached by Bob Hayes. The Sheboygan North Golden Raiders are coached by Tom Desitel. 
The officials assigned this evening by the WIAA, Tim Martinelli of Wisconsin Dells, Dean Esker of Reedsburg. And of course, these teams, the cities are well known. Case, one of three public schools in Racine and North, uh, one of two public schools in Sheboygan, both in the eastern parts of the state. Division one semi-final and we've got another one coming up for you after this one and that's uh, Madison West and Milwaukee Washington and Bill you just feel uh, we'll be looking at this one from the case of the underdog Racine case well they are and they aren't I think they were kind of the underdog last night against Nicolet also but their tenacious pressing defense really equalized things in fact it took them over the top and made them a victor so it'll be Nathan Schreemeyer, number 51 in white, going up against Mike Scott. And the tip controlled by the Eagles, even though Schreemeyer got the tip. North opens up in the man-to-man. -man. Abdullah over the back, a foul. That'll be on Schreemeyer. That's just the thing you don't want to see. Tom Desitil sitting right to our left here. And the big guy picks up a personal right in the first 10 seconds. The Golden Raiders on defense and get the rebound from the missed shot. This will be up and down, back and forth. Sheboygan North calls their system total attack system. Renzelman from long range is no good. Both teams have opened up in a man-for-man -man defense. Into the lane, no. A shot put up and good. Mike Scott. Case hits the first basket. Coming right back. Oh, gets the players up and the foul. That'll be two shots. That's very typical. After a made basket, they turn it into a three-on-one fast break. A three players up, did Brad Boko. Very good shot fake. So number three, Brad Balco at the line. You get a good look there at Bob Hayes in his third year as head coach of the Racine Case Eagles. Brad averaging eight points a game on the year. And draws the Raiders onto the scoreboard. Sheboygan North, the Golden Raiders, 23 and one. And makes both. So we're tied up at two early on here. Look at that pass. That ended up in row three. That looked like one of those tosses from center field to home plate during spring training, Ken. Oh, J.R. Smith is pumped. Actually, one of the basics of basketball, Bill, wasn't followed on that one. That was a one-hand pass. It's true. You're a lot more accurate with two hands on the ball. They'll keep track of turnovers for you. They will be very important throughout. And that's the first turnover. That'll be a travel. Turnover number two against Case. We may see a few travels uh, early in the game because of the, the quickness with which they both have come out in this ball game. Case falls back into a zone. Looks like a what? 3-2? Looks like a 3-2 right now. In the middle, they get it to Schreemeyer. He's fouled from behind by Carlos Butler. Case will have to figure out how to stop the big guy. Can you do that better, Bill, from a zone or man-to-man? -man? Well, it, it does slow you down, and, and, and it makes the offense pass the ball one or two more times. And you can rest a little bit so that when you get on your fast break, you got a little energy. <laughs> Clearing up something over here at the scorer's table. Not sure what the uh, mix-up here is momentarily. The foul is on Carlos Butler, as we had called it. Just want to make sure that's uh, accurate as we come in here. So Nathan Schreemeyer headed for UW-Milwaukee. Had a great game against Green Bay East, 16 points and 12 rebounds. Misses the first free throw. If he makes it, look for full court man-for-man -man pressure. Well, he doesn't make it. At the rebound, Steve Dahmer. How did he have excellent inside position like that? Looked like he was lined up that way. Pass is deflected, stolen by Dahmer. Ahead to Schmidt. Third turnover against Case. 
Renzelman inside to Schreemeyer. That's easy, but he misses. Second shot, that's good. That's going to be a problem all night long for Racine. Now Racine was giving up points early, not afraid to uh, let the points be scored. There's a shot that's blocked by Dahmer. As the Golden Raiders off to a good start, led by Steve Dahmer. From all the way out to Butler, Yusuf Abdullah, the point guard. Scott gives it back to Butler. That's just a little off. And a strong rebound by who else? Dahmer. Schmidt on the transition game ahead. Score. Give it to Balkow. That's their game. They just love to run off of makes or misses. J.R. Smith to Scott along the uh, baseline. Misses the shot. And it's one shot and out. Now the Raiders will set it up. They lead it 8-2. Two and a half minutes gone here in the first period. They're still in that 3-2 zone defense. And when the ball is passed down to the block, the middle man drops down. So in effect, you have a double team on the big man. Holding foul on Carlos Butler, his second personal. Carlos doesn't like that call. A common foul. Now he'll have to be careful. In the lane to Schreemeyer. Butler not holding back at all. Here's the pass ahead for J.R. Smith. And we're seeing cases in there. One, two, two. Full court zone trap now. And they get it ahead to Schreemeyer. He leads a three on two all the way. Somebody missed an assignment there. You've got to step up and stop the ball. Isn't that basic on the three on two? Stop the ball. 10-4. Abdullah, 15-footer. Schreemeyer read that nicely. And now Mark Schmidt will key the offense. Renzelman back to Schmidt. Renzelman a three. That's well off. And knocked out of bounds. Well, Chad Renzelman is the three-point threat for the Raiders, but that one wasn't even close. Well, another thing with that height advantage, you can throw up some of those threes and still be in pretty good shape to score if you miss. There's a three coming back the other way for J.R. Smith. Make it 10-7. Schmidt. Volkow scores. That took about four seconds. <laughs> and back comes Case. Scott all the way. Player control foul against Mike Scott. Good defensive position established. We'll see it here. It's Renzelman. Did exactly what he's coached to do. Perfect. That's the second personal on Scott, so two players already for Case with two personals. Schmidt from three-point range. 15 to seven. We have just barely played four minutes of the first period. Abdullah willing to give it up as he comes over into the fourth court. Now, we didn't see Nicolet put a lot of uh, pressure on Case yesterday. It'll be important for the point guard, Yusuf Abdullah, number 13, to handle that. Tipped away by Schmidt, and he gets the return pass. Two on one, wide open. Adam Ozapowski. Good finish to the fast break. J.R. Smith will take a three coming back. That's short. Hearns followed and scores. Jay Hearns. Nice position. Nice position that time. You can see him get hit on the head as coming into the game number 33, Eric Pons, the 6'1 senior for North. Well, he got inside position there, and that's all that he needed. And the ball just bounced right. Jay Hearn had an outstanding game yesterday in that win over Nicolay. And here comes North right back. Look at this. Schmidt in traffic, dishes it off on the left. No foul, rebound. And it's against Dahmer. 
no hesitation whatsoever for North. Schmidt was one on three, just went right through traffic. Yeah, he split a couple defenders that time, and I think we might see the officials at the end of the quarter here change their shoes and put on some roller skates, Ken. <laughs> this is really moving up and down. Fun game to watch. 17 to 10 already. North is in a full court, man-for-man uh, -man press, and they float off of the thrower in, and then they double-team the ball. Butler breaks the press. Nice pass along the lane. Hearn scores. Very well executed. Case isn't going to back down either. Graymeyer dribbling it in the open court. I'll tell you, Butler makes a great steal. He's got two personals ahead for J.R. Smith. Well, the problem there was the big guy took the ball, put it below his waist, and the little guy just took it out of his hands. Well, they go with the two big guys. And that's going to be a travel on Schreymeyer. It's a 7-0 run. 7-0 run. And we've got a timeout right now as Case is back in this game. They trail it by just three. We'll continue after this message from our statewide sponsor, Senex Land O'Lakes. This is your WIAA Network Station. Sheboygan North leads it by three after five minutes and 15 seconds, but Case coming back, points off turnovers, and J.R. Smith really enjoyed that slam. Good way to finish a turnover. Pretty even in turnovers, but points off turnovers. Sheboygan North has capitalized more, and that's the three-point difference in the game. Well, that's what we saw against Nicolay. Racine just lived off of turnovers. In the whole game, they scored a total of 27 points off, their, off of all of the caused turnovers. And forced something like uh, 30 turnovers. Oh, it was just amazing. Their best offense last night was their defense. That's the second personal, I believe, on Dahmer. Nice pass to Hearn. He scores. Got inside position. Schmidt. Azapowski looking for help. Gives it back to Dahmer. Now they get it into the forecourt. Schmidt right around through the lane and scores. Nice left-handed lay-in. Mark Schmidt with five. The one thing you've got to do if you're trapping and double-teaming, you've got to come together. Abdullah's shot a little short. Azapowski with a strong rebound. Here comes Schmidt again. He's cut off, lays it on the left side, around and out. Azapowski. Putbacks are really important in this game. Hearn in the lane, tries to hit Scott. And the Raiders come out with it. Sixth turnover. Look at Case go for the ball. And, oh, I thought there was going to be a personal foul on Butler that called for calming the ball. We've seen that called quite a bit in the neck, quite a bit, a few times here in the tournament. What's the ruling on that, Bill Brown? Well, you've got to keep your hand on top of the ball. Once it comes, and it comes from the bottom of the ball all the way on top, that's going to be called and interpreted by the official as a turnover. Turning it over. Literally. Actually, yes. it's a... It's a travel is it not yes yes it is that would be the signal and then they just describe it as a turning the ball over the wild shot from the outside and Dahmer able to come out of there with the ball they look for Schmidt he hits his man in the corner they rotate it nicely and come back to Eric Kahn for three instant offense averaging 10 points a game and a travel turnover against Case Again, all of this is caused because of the intense pressure defense. Now both teams trying to do it to the other. 24-16, and we're still in the first quarter. Racine's back in their zone again, trying to negate the height. Hans a little too strong on that one, and Butler with a long rebound. And a hold foul on one of the Raider players. That's David Wick, number 45, a 6'1 senior in the game. It's hard to keep track of all the substitutions that are made here by Coach Tom Desitel. Well, both coaches know that this pace is the type of situation where you can't go at five or six. You've got to go eight or nine deep just to be fresh at the end. 
North likes to play with nine players. Now coming in number 55, Todd Winkleman, a 6'1 senior. Will give Jay Hearn a bit of a break. Case pretty much went with eight players yesterday. Devan Smith loses the ball in traffic. And we've got a hold foul on Abdullah. So the foul's mounting up early here. Fifth team foul. Actually, both teams have committed five team fouls. Well, that's one way to stop the fast break, Ken, but in the end, it's going to hurt you because that team's going to be on the line shooting a lot of freebies. Renzelman back in. North leads it by eight, 24-16. Final minute, first period. Draymeyer wide open inside, goes weak side to Ozapowski, too strong. And a foul over the back on Schreimeyer. Well, now, Bill, let's talk about it here. The officials have come out and are calling a tight game. Well, they really are. You've you, you got to work for position, and if you don't have position, they're going to call you for going over the back or being out of position. Isn't it up to the players to adjust to this? Yes, Five it second is. Call. Absolutely. And they've done it early enough now so that they know how the rest of the game is going to be officiated. And they're being consistent with it. Yes, also. they are. They're doing a nice job. Renzelman is wide open. That one's off. And the ball goes over the end line. Looks like Shavan Smith just couldn't hold on to it. Right now, Sheboygan North is big with uh, Shearmeyer in there and Ozapowski. Uh, that, that's 6'7 and 6'8. That's pretty tough to rebound against. And look at the subs, three of them coming in for the Eagles. And one of the fourth sub, number 41, Kevin Malkarek, a 6'4 senior. Saw very limited time yesterday. One thing this does do, if you're playing man-for-man -man defense, it's confusing because you've got all new people to adjust to and guard. Zaposki was wide open along the baseline, and he's hammered there by J.R. Smith. Adam Ozapowski was calling for that pass for a couple of seconds before he got it. That was a nice lob pass in there. Adam had his hand up. He gave the, the passer a nice target, and he ended up on the free throw line. First free throw is too strong. Coming back in the game, Brad Balco. Schreemeyer will get a rest. This will be interesting when Racine gets the ball. Will they play for one with 30 seconds to go, or will they push it up like they have been? What clock? They'll go for it. 25-16. Pass in the lane, wide open underneath. Player, new player in, scoring Kevin Melcarrick. You call that one, Ken. Here's that 1-2-2 two, two full court trap. Along the baseline, up, shot's no good, and the foul. One thing about the zone trap, once you get it beyond those three players in the backcourt who are trapping, you've got a fast break at the other end. Malkarek commits the foul and made it strong enough that the shot from Bolko was off. Brad Bolko, six-foot senior. And it looks like, uh, Bill, that's what uh, Sheboygan North is trying to do. Once they get it in the forecourt, they say, let's attack. That's right, and they do, and they're going to get something good out of it. They're either going to get a basket or they're going to end up on the free throw line. 27-18. got 10 seconds left. Butler forces one and scores. Carlos Butler. Renzelman will fire a long one, and that's the end of an entertaining first period. 27 to 20, Sheboygan North leading it. We'll be back with the second quarter in a moment. But first, a word from our local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Well, it's cold and it's snowy outside, so why not come into the University of Wisconsin Fieldhouse? Nice and warm in here. And we'll see the second quarter of a Division I semifinal, Sheboygan North and Racine Case. And even if it wasn't warm in here, these players would be heating it up 27 to 20 after eight minutes. And the shooting pretty darn good, 50% and 53%.
points off turnover. Sheboygan North with the edge there, and they lead it by seven after eight minutes. Schmidt along the baseline, too strong, knocked out of bounds, and the Raiders will keep it. To give you an idea of the pace of this ball game in the last nine seconds to end the first quarter, both teams got a shot off. <laughs> having much of a chance as there's a five second call five seconds to get rid of that pass and mark schmidt not able to do it that's the sixth turnover yeah. bob hayes in his third year at racine case assistant for 20 years at racine park until he moved over to case you can say something well i was just going to say that watch for sheboygan north this quarter to play half court man defense and run and jump out of it in other words they'll double team the ball Zapowski with a block of an attempted dump. Look at the play above the rim, and that'll be goaltending against Case. At the other end, Adam Zapowski made a great block, actually a deflection of an attempted shot, and is this goaltending or not? Well, let's take a look. I thought it was off the rim, Ken. It's got to be in that cylinder, and I thought the ball was well off the rim. Pass in the lane. Fadeaway is a little short. That's from Kevin Malkarek. Renzelman, little pass inside to Kahn's. Yes, Eric Kahn's. What happens on their fast break, they run to spots, and if the player doesn't get the three-point shot, he then passes down to the block for a higher percentage shot. Almost a breakaway, 11-point margin is the biggest. From outside, beautiful shot from Carlos Butler. This is Eagles basketball. They can turn you over and get easy ones. And that'll be a foul on one of the Raiders as they just did turn it over. And a couple of the Raider players saying, hey, I need a reserve in here. Here's the turnover, the pass to the side. Puts it up. He had a step back because he had one foot over the line. He was that's sometimes tough because it throws you off balance, but he made it. Players are pretty aware now of where the that three-point line is. And you'll see them sometimes paying too much attention to where their feet are. You don't want them looking down. You want them looking at the basket because that's what they're shooting at. So J.R. Smith, a 6'2 junior, coming on real strong here in the tournament trail. Makes the first of two. He had a great night last night. 21 points and five steals. The WIAA State Tournament is brought to you statewide by the Rural Insurance Company, providing Wisconsin families and businesses with a full line of insurance needs. Off the main free throw, zone pressure. Almost the turnover. Schmidt just able to get a fingertip on it. 31-25. Cases cut it back to a six-point margin. Renzelman posts up. Chad Renzelman scoring from inside. That's going to be tough if they let uh, Sheboygan get up in a half-court set offense. From the corner, that one was well off. Pass too far, and a turnover by North. One thing the scene's got to work at just a little bit more is more patience in the half-court offense. They're, they're rushing their shots. They could pass the ball two or three more times and create a much better shooting opportunity. Coming into the game, number 23, Greg Oldrick. And Schmidt will sit down. So Tom Desitil goes into his lineup a little bit deeper. Abdullah gets his man up, shoots that well off target, and Renzelman good position. Now David Richter will key the offense. Feeds in the quarter for Kahn's. But take that back then, Boko, Brad Boko. A well-called timeout. 35-25, 5.42 remaining. And Bill, that's interesting. Why do you call that a uh, well-called timeout? Case likes the fast pace. They just gave up one basket. What does that mean? Well, they like the fast pace, but the, the lead is now 10, and you don't want it to get away from you and get, get higher into the double digits. Really impressed by the aggressiveness of the Raiders of Sheboygan North. Nice feed by Richter to Brad Volkow. 
That's the classic penetrate and ditch. Good follow through and the shot is good. Of course, we're glad to be bringing you all 16 of these games from the 78th Annual Boys State Basketball Tournament. Of course, last weekend we brought you 16 of the Girls State Basketball Tournament. This year, one of our statewide sponsors, the Marshfield Clinic, is adding a special component to its support of the WIAA by announcing the Marshfield Clinic Science Award. This award will provide $1,000 to the science department of the eight championship schools in the Boys and Girls Tournament. Now, uh, coming up at halftime, Chris Roth will be talking with Bob DeVita of Marshfield Clinic. And maybe they'll be talking about this science award offered by one of our statewide sponsors. Sheboygan North, obviously, with those graphics up there, is shooting at a very high percentage, and because they're taking good shots. Percentage is a result of good shot selection. Nice drive along the lane. The shot is good and a foul. Good movement, Mike Scott. The one thing that Coach Desitel is not happy about in that situation is that the defensive help was not there. They let the ball player go right by. Mike Scott just showed a nice move in my book. It was a very nice move. Kind of that step away. So the 6'3 junior trying to compete the three-point play. Too strong. And he comes away with the rebound. Butler from deep in the corner. Kept alive by Schmidt. Off of the miss this time, they set up a full court pressure defense. Oh, you think Case would say, gee, we're down by eight. Let's pull back a little bit. Uh-uh. Nope, they keep coming at you. Smith cross court. Look at this. Two on four. Hearn's shot is partially blocked. Hits. No, they say, I was going to say hit the side of the board, but not. It's tied up. And on the alternating possession, the Eagles will get it. Exactly what you just said. They keep coming at you defensively and offensively. Well, it's like neither team is going to back down. No, who's going to who's going to get tired first, or who's going to commit more fouls first? I think the second one is, the, is going to be the big factor, Ken, because of the number of fouls as a result of the pressure defense. If you can shoot 75, 80 percent from the line tonight, I think you're going to get a W. You think uh, conditioning will be much of a factor? Both these teams played now yesterday, but they played yesterday afternoon. Well, it's a little bit different than from the regular season. They may have played back-to-back -back during the regular season, but probably on a Friday night, a Saturday night situation. So it is a little bit different there. And obviously the winner tomorrow, that's going to be the ultimate test as far as conditioning and endurance. Three in a row. But first, you have to win the semifinal game here. And Butler converts on the second, 35-28. They've changed it to a 2-1-2 full-court zone pressure defense. And they fall back into that zone. And that's basically because of the big guys. Right now, the big guy in there is Ozapowski. Wraparound pass is off Renzelman. He's just standing out there. The ball comes out to him on a deflected pass. And he hits his first three-point try. One for five. Scott in the lane. Passes to Butler. 10-point lead, the biggest was 11. In the lane, Hearn. Nice pass. Made the defensive man step up, and then he just passed it off. And he come right back with some pressure here, double-teaming the ball. That's a blocking foul on J.R. Smith, his second personal. Tough call. Good hustle play, though. Now the defense forced that contact, forced the official to make a call. And I would agree, it was a correct call. You have to give the offensive player, what, a step? At least, yes. And you can't move into him. You have to basically be set when the contact is made. Good look at Mark Schmidt, a 6'2 senior. 12 points, but misses his free throw. Well, it'll be interesting to see how these free throws mound up. There's a foul along the a sideline on Renzelman. Again, not a smart foul. The, the player had just crossed the 10-second line. He's pushed out of bounds. 
He's not in a scoring threat position. He hasn't shown that he's going to hurt you in any way. Well, Renzelman comes out, and Eric Kahn's back in. You really have to stay sharp with all the substitutions by Tom Desitel here, but Bob Hayes doing a good job of substituting as well. I'm glad that's your job, Ken. <laughs> Now, this is a key free throw here because, number one, they can cut it to six, and number two, they can set a full court pressure off of it. Shot is missed, but the offensive rebound fadeaways. No. In traffic. Good. Great J. shot Smith. adjustment. Oh, did he get up there, and then he adjusts the ball. Had like a double pump up there. That's a reach-in foul on and the third on Carlos Butler. Almost got himself a technical to go along with it. A little bit too much of a emotional reaction. You got to play with poise, especially in this setting here. If you if you if you lose it, it then becomes contagious, and your other teammates start acting that way, and things get out of control. But I don't think these officials are going to let that happen. They've shown early on that they're in control, and the players, as we said, have to adjust. Mark Schmidt makes the first of the one-and-one. One. Mark Schmidt, two-time All-Conference in the Fox River Valley Conference, which the Golden Raiders won for the third consecutive year. And that's a tough conference. And to win it three in a row is really something. And is this a foul or a held ball? Well, I think it's an over-the-back call, Ken. It'll be on Adam Ozapowski, so that'll bring Nathan Schremeyer in. It's almost as if, Bill, when uh, you make a mistake for Sheboygan North, you uh, or, or a foul or something, you're uh, substituted for. Well, you don't stay out there very long. <laughs> and again, that's twofold. It's, it's a mistake. You come out, plus he's getting new people in, so he's keeping fresh people out there. Well, that's part of the whole design of the system, a total attack system. And uh, like we've seen so often in college basketball, uh, run those players in, keep them fresh, well, keep, the, uh, keep the pace up, and try to wear the other team down. Right, and it's fun for everybody then, because everybody's so involved in the game. Turns in and out on the second free throw. 39-34, hard to believe it, but we played just a little over 12 minutes. Cons from way out. And ahead, this could be a freebie for J.R. Smith. He's blocked from behind. Abdullah in and out. Some of the fans were shouting for a goaltending because they thought the ball was in its downward flight. Schremeyer's pass was a bullet cross-courted and hit the backboard. Let's take a look at this shot here. He's up. No, it was clean. Oh, yeah. He was on the way up. That was a great defensive play. We're going to take all those whistles away for those fans who thought it was goaltending. Abdullah. And a foul over the back. On David Wick of Sheboygan North. Well, Dave was fighting for defensive position, but he got caught behind. And then as the pass came in, he reached around instead of moving his feet to get around. Now, Schremeyer was just brought out on the last trip down court. And when Wick committed the foul, Nathan Schremeyer comes right back in. You got it. Watch their free throw situations. Sheboygan North has four people on the lane rebounding, and they have one player all the way down on the free throw line extended. This is another way of pushing the ball up the floor quickly. Now that second one is missed, and it's a four-point game now. We're seeing Case, like they did with Nicolay in the first half, just kind of hanging around. They trailed, but just always within reach. Yeah, they play what we call a mother-in-law defense. They hang around, they pester you, they nag you. <laughs> they just don't let you alone. Mother-in-law defense. I haven't heard that one before. And I apologize to all the mother-in-laws out there. There's a steal. Dahmer. Schmidt gives it up. And a held ball. That'll oh be a foul. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, 
Kahn's thought he had ball, but the official said he had arm. Let's take a look at it. That'll be the third personal on Eric Kahn's. Now you've got both the ball and part of the arm. That's a tough one because both players are in motion and you got to call something. Case trying to do to Sheboygan North in the second half of this one what they did to a fine Nicolet team yesterday. That free throw well off. But Hearn with the rebound and gets the roll. Jay Hearn quietly now up to 13 points. This is amazing, Ken. They're missing free throws and they're getting the offensive rebound against a taller team. And we've got a scrum going on out there. That looked like what they do in rugby. They do, but I don't know what happens when a scrum occurs. <laughs> could you could you fill me in here? No, that's about the only term I know in rugby. Okay. Aggressive play on both teams, though. Somebody gets the ball out. And it'll be the North Golden Raiders. Their lead is down to two points. It was 11 at one time in this quarter. Again, I think the zone here is slowing down the amount of time that it takes Sheboygan North to put up a shot. They like to put it up a lot quicker than this. Still isn't it good to take your time and get a good shot? That's just not the pace of the game they like, though. That's right. When you're a racehorse team, everything has to be that way. Schreemeyer in the lane. Score. That's the Achilles heel right now in this ball game. That, that extra height that North has. Deontay Pruitt feeds Scott, and he's fouled. Mike Scott maneuvering and getting room. I tell you, Racine Case, while they don't have the tall guys, Jay Hearn at 6'3", and Mike Scott at 6'3", do a real fine job of maneuvering inside. We really haven't talked about that, Bill. Well, they do a nice job of pivoting and facing the basket. They have good ball fakes, and then they go right at the big guy once they execute the fake. And they're getting on the free throw line because they're getting fouled in the act of shooting. And this, the, this may be a factor here with Nathan on the bench with three. He obviously isn't going to play any more of this half. Now, Tom Desidel has a nice uh, luxury in there and bringing in uh, Adam Ozapowski at 6-7. Scott's free throw is in and out. My sense is that the free throw shooting is not particularly good for either team. Well, and it's especially hurting Racine because they love the pressure defense, and it gives you a couple extra seconds to do that if you make the free throw. Second one is no good. 135, second quarter. 41-37. 2-3 zone defense now by Racine. Wild shot, and Hearn with a strong rebound. Here they come. In the lane, Hearn, fall away, scores. Jay Hearn. He's taking off where he left off last night, 25 points. David Richter out of control. Look at this. Two on none. J.R. Smith this time scores. It's tied up. It's tied up and it's warming up in here. First time it's been tied since it was two to two. Pass in the lane, nicely done. David Wick, his first field goal. Good way to answer. That was a nice pass across the lane. Final 25 seconds here of the second period. J.R. Smith traveled. Good idea, take it to the big man. But he moved both feet. So now North can set up for a final shot. Like you said in the first <laughs> quarter, both teams got off a shot in the final nine seconds. Down to 10. And they'll definitely set up for one here. Schmidt and Kahn's not afraid to take the threes. In the lane to Shrema Azapowski, rather. The shot will count if it goes, but it doesn't. 
And so Sheboygan Morris, number one in the state, scores the last four points of the second quarter to take a 45-41 lead. What an entertaining first half. 16 more minutes coming up. We'll be back with our halftime activities after these messages from our statewide sponsors, Rural Insurance and Menards. This is your WIAA Network Station. 5:41 at halftime. Yesterday we had a 92 to 83 game. Racine Case winning over Nicolay and Bill Groff. It seems like these uh, pressure defenses are uh, balancing each other out. Well, they are. And again, this game I really believe is going to be decided at the free throw line. If Racine Case can stay close like they are and not get too upset about the height advantage that Sheboygan has and make some free throws, I think they're going to be in good shape. Well, it'll be key for both teams to stay fresh, make free throws, and to stay out of foul trouble. We'll be back a little bit later to take uh, another look at the first half. Right now, let's go cross-court to our Chris Ross. Chris? All right, thanks very much, Ken. It is my privilege now to be joined for the very last time on our WIAA Network, State Superintendent of Schools, Bert Grover, who, as you all know by now, is retiring at the end of his current term. And, Bert, I know you will be missed. And any feelings coming here to the tournament for your last time? Well, it's it's sentimental. It's, it's a very special moment, and it's a privilege to be on this program. Now, that passes, but it's time for it to pass. Having said that, this is the last state basketball tournament, WIA tournament, I'm going to attend. As the state superintendent of school, you'll come back as a fan, won't you? Yes, we have a freshman in high school, a pretty good basketball player. Who knows, maybe we'll make it here another way. So perhaps a future for Burt Grover after uh, superintendent as a scout, it sounds like. Well, I um, would tell you that this program inspires us all. I couldn't help but uh, the other day in the girls' tournament, and uh, Prentice was coming down with their school buses. I was driving up north. You saw the community with all their signs. We're from Prentice. We're proud of our kids. We're proud we're from Prentice. Hooray. And uh, what a wonderful statement. And communities get to do that. And it's it's the way it ought to be, uh, centering our children and, and celebrating around them. And, yes, celebrating around community pride. So what a, what a wonderful event. Now, for those of us or those of you out there who did not see Bert last week, what's going to be the fondest memory for Bert Grover as he steps away from office now? Well, the, uh, the uh, privilege that the people of Wisconsin gave uh, me to be an advocate for children. Children are voiceless in our political process. They don't vote, uh, yet our schools are central to our renewal. And yes, someone has to speak up for those that are unable to express themselves in our democracy because they haven't been extended the franchise. So children, uh, an advocate for children. I, I, I like that role. I felt comfortable in it. I hope I did a good job. Well, I think many people would agree that you did. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of interest now in the election for a replacement. Do you have any ideas of where the future might be for this office? Well, I hope that they continue to elect the state superintendent of public instruction in Wisconsin. It's a nonpartisan office, and uh, it uh, has no state board of education. It sits there in the Constitution. Uh, it uh, has great moral authority, and then hopefully the state superintendent will just absolutely put the needs of children front and center in the view uh, and in the priority of the broader society. Bert Grover, you will be missed, but you're welcome here anytime. <laughs> we'll be back next year. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll save a stool for you. Hoorah for WIA. All right, thanks, Bert Grover. Good luck in your retirement, sir. Bert Grover, the state superintendent of schools who is stepping down at the end of this year, has always been a welcome guest here along the WIA network. Well, we will return at halftime after this message from the WIA. This is your WIA network station. Time in the field house, and uh, we were just busting a little move here. The racing, racing case. Pom Pom Squad doing quite a routine for the fans here in the field house. It's been quite a game, too, for all the fans here in the field house. And to recap the first half, now let's go back across the course to Ken and Bill. Well, you know, we do say stay pretty busy with our halftime activities with interviews, and we want to have a chance to bring you those in the highlights. But uh, one of the things that we miss, and you miss also around the statewide coverage of these games, are the entertaining halftime shows. And they have been very entertaining, and a lot of the high school fans especially pay real close attention to how those pom-pom squads and dance squads do. But this one had plenty to be entertained, entertaining about in the first half. We'll take a look at the highlights right now, and there were plenty of highlights. It was a, a dunk -thon in the first half. That's Adam Azapowski. And for Racine Case, J.R. Smith will come right back. Both teams just forcing turnovers and not having a defender back. Well, the pace is so quick. 
Here's a nice ball fake and a power move by Jay Hearn. He has 15 points in the first half. Taking up where he left off yesterday. Here's a nifty move by Mark Schmidt. Now remember, he's a natural lefty, but it's still a heck of a move. And then uh, Racine Case staying even with some good outside shooting. Carlos Butler buries this one. And Sheboygan North was successful throughout the half in penetrating and then dishing. Here's a pass. Brad Bulkow converts. And the big guy in the middle shows he's got uh, a little touch. Nathan Schreemeyer. He nice. had eight points in the first half. Nice little scoop shot. We're going to have to watch him because he's got three fouls starting the second half. Now fouls might be a factor as we take a look at these statistics. We'll see that the shooting really pretty good for as uh, fast and harrowing as the pace was. 56% for Sheboygan North, 47 for Racine Case. And the difference there is you were talking during the first half, Bill. 7 for 14 for Case from the free throw line. And North a little bit better at 6 for 9. If they make about 10 out of out of 14 on those, they uh, we've got a tie game here. They've got, to, they've got to beef that up. Excuse me, Ken. And the outstanding thing is the rebounds. One rebound difference between the two teams. And again, Racine Case giving up plenty. Individual leaders, Hearn with 15, Smith with 13, and Volkow is surprising, 12, and Schreemeyer with 8, and the 5 rebounds. So, it's been a track meet, yet so often when teams play like this, you play to stay close in the first half and play to have the other team blink in the second half. That's right. It's just a matter now of who makes the least mistakes. And again, I really think free throws are going to be the key element in the second half. Well, we'll have to keep track of it. I think the key element, and I beg to differ with you, Coach, might be the attrition with fouls as the fouls are starting to mount up. And we'll see who uh, able to stay deep and, and keep fresh players in there as we might have some players out by a foul disqualification. At any rate, you can know the second half is going to be as fast-paced as the first. It's a four-point difference right now. Sheboygan North leading Racine Case. We'll be back with the third quarter after we hear from our local stations. This is your WIAA Network Station. Back at the field house, getting set for the third quarter. Racine Case and Sheboygan North. The feature that we'll have about the Marshfield Clinic Science Award will be coming up between these two games, this game and the one coming up after it. Madison West and Milwaukee, Washington are just about set here for the start of the third quarter. And I would be uh, very surprised if either team slows it down at all. No, I think they talked about let's just do a little bit better job of executing. When we do have to set up, let's take a little bit more time, get a better shot, get a higher percentage shot. It's just going to keep on being as exciting as it was in the first half. She's going to be in the 90s by by all means, I, I don't see how it can be any less than in the 90s, Ken. Unless both teams get uh, exceptionally cold. But then again, as you look at the averages throughout the season, Sheboygan North 81 points, and Racine Case averages 76 points. Now well, 75.4. And this is in the tournament, but throughout the season, Racine Case just a little bit higher. Is our statistical crew right on top of things. And no surprise, Sheboygan North comes out in a man for man. Hearn with a fall away. Had to adjust his shot again because of the big player's hand up in the air. Go right to Bokal. Six point lead for the Golden Raiders. Bokal now has 14. Right in the lane, drawing a foul. Mike Scott. And Bokal on the foul. Well, obviously, there's their game plan. Rush it up. If you get the ball inside, take it to the big guys. That's going to be a foul just about every time when you go up and uh, contend. If there's any contact whatsoever, it's going to be the defender's foul. Well, let's see right away now if they made a resolution about their free throw shooting. That's one. It's a good start. Mike Scott is a junior averaging 15 points a game. Had uh, 10 rebounds yesterday against Nicolay. Also plays volleyball for Case and golf. Second free throw is short. So it's a five-point game. Even though he missed the free throw, they applied pressure in the backcourt. Oh, Schmidt, great penetration for Schreemeyer. He finished it off. Schmidt's fourth assist. Difference there was after he was double teamed, he kept right on going through and got the return pass. 
in the lane. Scott, just a little too strong. And Bokal grabs the rebound. And here they come. Renzelman. Hearn was able to block off and get the rebound. Yusuf Abdullah. Scott fouled Renzelman on the block. That's two quick fouls here to start the second half. Well, you can see what both teams were probably told at halftime. Case, go to the basket, draw the fouls, and that's where they make their living. And North, counterattack. That's right. And one thing Coach Destel was yelling out toward the end of the first half was, shoot, shoot, get the ball up there faster so the big guys can rebound if you miss. Can't get those free throws, though. Again, Sheboygan North has one player all the way down the front court on this free throw situation. And Case has somebody back to guard him. So Scott gets one for two, 49-43. Schmidt looking for help into Schreemeyer. Has the shot, but it's no good. Bolt call, no. Schreemeyer coming back, scores, and is fouled. One for three on the offensive rebounds. One went down. And you're not going to see the expression by Schreemeyer, but as he got that second one, he was fouled. That was a look of determination, Ken. Really worked hard for that. Well, Nathan says that I play better when coach gets me angry. Well, maybe coach got Nathan angry at halftime. It's now an eight-point game, so North has outscored Case. Four points here. Early in the third quarter, Division I semifinals, Scott with a 15-footer. Big basket because he keeps him close and he set up a little pressure, except it wasn't very effective. Schmidt to Bokau, too strong, and Bokau over the back. There's one of those situations where a player doesn't do something exactly well, and He's kind of embarrassed, and he comes back and fouls to save face. Now, that happens all the time, though. Yes, it does. High school, college, grade school, doesn't matter. I think the crowd, uh, a large crowd here tonight, is a little worn out from the pace of that first half, Bill. Well, I think they're just waiting. <laughs> the explosion's about to happen. And here they come back, north. Hans can't hold the pass from Schmidt. He booted it out of bounds, so another turnover on North. That time they were just a little bit too quick. The old saying, be quick but don't hurry. Try to do things under control. I like that. Be quick but don't hurry. That's, Don't you tell your team? That's an old John Wooden quote, but I use it occasionally. Schmidt picks Abdullah and slams coming back. Another turnover converted into a basket. 53-45. Did he get up in the air? Woo. Coming right back, Scott. Good answer. And Abdullah tips it away from behind, but it goes right to Renzelman. Schreemeyer in the lane. He scores. Now it's getting louder as the pace gets quicker. 12 for Schreemeyer. In the lane, Winkleman is off. Todd Winkleman in the game. Really impressed by the ball handling abilities of Mark Schmidt. In and out for Kahn's. Pass ahead. Oh, nice adjustment in the air that time to protect the ball from the defender. That's Mike Scott, now has 12 points. 55-49, turnover against North. And Schmidt has trouble getting up. Look at this slam. Mark really gets off the floor. And here's the adjustment you talk about by Mike Scott coming back. As we're back to action here, can't spend too much time on these replays as Abdullah's shot is off target. And the Raiders coming back. Schmidt dishes off. And now the Raiders will set up. In the lane, Schreemeyer, nice pass, but before that, three seconds. 
another situation where you come down the floor and you don't get a shot off. You've got to try and get a shot off of every possession. He was camped in that lane for an awful long time, Ken. Good call. The WIAA State Tournament is brought to you statewide by your local Senex and Land O'Lakes cooperatives, providing quality petroleum products, crop inputs, and livestock feeds. Winkleman. The little guy goes over the big guy. 6-1 over 6-7. Here's the pressure again. They're going to double team the ball every chance they get. Schmidt right down the lane to Schreemeyer. You were impressed with Mark's ball handling. I'm very impressed with his passing, especially on the run. Gets the ball in the middle and splits defenders, and then he's got the option to go either right or left. Ball tipped away and a steal. Here comes Schmidt. Are you ready? Just has to lay that one in. Kind of lost his steps that time. Almost lost the ball going up. Schmidt now with 10 and 5 assists, and he almost picks Abdullah again. Back door. Score. Great play. Bounce pass on the back door move. That one looked like it was almost called. Well, I think they made eye contact is what they made on it. Schreemeyer right down the lane. Foul. Good second effort that time. Nathan really stays with it. He concentrates and he stays with it. Well, the first one wasn't there, but he got the inside position. And I think Hearn was just frustrated with the foul there. Yeah, I guess the only thing I would question in that case was why would Nathan put the ball up underhand and finger roll it? Just take it up into two hands and a good, strong power move. Now into the game for Racine Case, number 43, Dion Harris, a 6'2 sophomore. Hey, you gotta tell Dion what's going on out there. Where he's at. Players getting into the game who did not play yesterday, and I think both coaches realize that they need to have fresh legs in there. I'm sure we're going to see some kind of pressure off of this made free throw by Nathan. It'll be a man for man with a floater. Again, Schreemeyer headed for UW-Milwaukee, committed early in the early signing period. He's going with a pretty small lineup right now, and only two of their starters in there. And there's a steal. I think one of the reasons they went small was that North went big. They've got Adam in there, and they've got Nathan. And to counteract that, they're hoping they can get up and down the floor quicker than their big guys. Well, we've got a timeout, and Sheboygan North leads it by eight. We'll be back with more third-quarter action after we hear from our statewide sponsors, Marshfield Clinic and the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. This is your WIAA Network Station. Sheboygan North has up their halftime lead by four points. And Bill Groff, we talk about a game like this being a track meet. I like to think of it more as a marathon. Well, you're <laughs> exactly right. It just goes on and on and on. Lots of turnovers, lots of action. Players sprawled all over the floor. Delight to watch. And a delight to call as you see the field goal shooting. Sheboygan North better in the second half. And you have to say, those uh, percentages of the difference right now well they tell a lot of stories about the ball game Schmidt will try three and that one's well off so the Racine case Eagles down by eight coming back in still only have two of their starters in in the lane shot and a foul that'll be Dion Harris a sophomore going to the line I think you'll note that most of the time when Sheboygan fouls, they receive players in the act of shooting. So that's going to result, again, in two free throws. And I emphasize free. If we could just convert some here, they're going to get back in it. Now Schreemeyer commits his fourth personal. And when you look at that, here's Schreemeyer, 6'8", going up against a player who's 6'2", six, six, forcing a shot. Why was that foul necessary? Well, you're right. That's just not... Good recognition and making a good decision. He had to adjust his shot as it was. The sophomore at the line. 
Little short on the second one, and that's going to be a foul over the back on Winkleman. It's going to be interesting to see how long Coach Desitel has Nathan on the bench. Is he going to let him rest now for about two and a half minutes and wait until the fourth quarter, or bring him in if Racine narrows the gap? Well, again, he's got the luxury of having uh, Adam Ozapowski in there at 6-7. He's the ball, one with the ball right now. Schmidt, the point guard. Playing catch with Bokal. Renzelman from long range. That one was well off. And so is that pass. Abdullah makes a great save. Gets it away to Scott. Scott maneuvering in traffic. Doesn't get it. And back come the Raiders. Look at Schmidt. Two on three. Forces the contact and drew the foul. Well, the key is he took the ball to the middle that time. Right here, he comes over with the left-hand dribble, gets it in the middle, and then makes his move. If Harris had been able to square up, might have drawn a player control foul on that one. Well, well, we're not the only ones impressed, Bill, with uh, Mark Schmidt. He's had uh, a lot of attention from schools, colleges, and that includes um, some Division I schools. He's put all the attention off from the college recruiters until after the season, just wanted to concentrate on the high school season. Some Division II schools also interested in Mark, and I think he can uh, definitely play at the uh, Division I or Division II level. He can handle the ball. Well, he can handle the ball. He's a good passer. He jumps extremely well for a kid his height. Pretty good form on his jump shot. And averaging a good number of assists per contest, now has 11 points. This is a premium possession here. Case has got to come out of here with something. That'll be a foul over the back on Jay Hearn. And you say that because Norris starting to pull out a little bit. It's a nine-point margin right now. And Jay Hearn just picks up a personal. That's only his second, though. That's the second over the back call on a rebound. And a turnover. See, if you can help it, when you break a press and get the ball in the middle to your big guy, if he doesn't put it to the floor, you're a lot more effective. Big guys get in trouble when they try to be ball handlers. Renzelman forces a turnover off the hands of Smith. So we're trading turnovers here with 1.39 remaining third quarter. North with a hoop here could get it up to double figures again. And Racine stuck with that zone all night. Henselman's shot is well off. Ahead to Deontay Pruitt. That doesn't go. Taken back by Scott. Loses the ball. Out of bounds. No foul. North has two players behind the two case defenders, but they're able to cover. Three on one. And that'll be a foul on Scott. And that's exactly what you pointed out, Ken. If they can get the ball past the three defensive guys in the back court, they've got a definite numbers advantage in the front court. Coach Bob Hayes looks a little frustrated. I'm not sure what his signals indicate over there. Not happy with the call or the fouls or what. Because that's the third personal on Scott. 15 points now for the senior. Brad Bokow, an outstanding all-around student, National Honor Society, and the Presidential Academics, Academic Fitness Award. He's having himself a game also, 16 points, and he averages just eight. And there's no doubt he's fit, playing at this pace. Schmidt called for the foul. How many on Mark now, Don? Two. Not too bad. Abdullah all the way, but has the shot partially blocked. And here come the Raiders. They lead it by 11. 64-53. And a travel. 
there's an example where he probably Adam probably should have put that ball on the floor for at least one dribble and then powered it up. Too far to go. Smith pulled out of the game, a little unhappy with it. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. 64-53. Case really needs something here. They've been held quiet for a bit. In the lane, shot is short, tipped up, no good. I think it might have been better that time to grab the offensive board and put it back up instead of tipping. In the lane, wide open, Ozapowski. Nice pass and taking advantage of the height difference. He has nine and the 13 point margin, the biggest of the game. Scott's shot is off. Now you can feel the Eagles starting to wilt. Yeah, and a lot of frustration is starting to set in. And there's an example. North gets the offensive rebound. The Case Eagle fouls him. In that case, it was uh, Jay Hearn. Frustration foul. Well, it was 55 51. And since then, it's an 11 2 run. But that's the whole strategy behind what both of these teams try to do. Yes, it is. The longer you can make your spurt, and you can, if you can widen yours and shorten the other teams, you're going to be in good shape. First one is no good. That'll be a foul over the back on one of the Golden Raiders. I think it's Steve Dahmer. Again, frustration the other way. Didn't have position, but he still tried to get the rebound by going over the back. Well, again, as we have more and more fouls, these teams will be in the bonus here, and the free throws will become even more important. Final few seconds. Tough Dula. man here with the last shot coming up. Winkleman forces one, no good. Renzelman, and that's it for the third quarter. It's a good one for the Golden Raiders of Sheboygan North. They lead it 66 to 53. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in a moment, but first a word from our local stations. This is your WIAA Network Station. Number one, leading the unranked Eagles of Racine Case. And Bill, you look back on that 11 to two run and you say, what happened? Case is still playing the up-tempo game. They're, play, they're playing the up-tempo game, but take a look at this free throw shooting. Two for six, 33%. If you make some more free throws, you're, be, you're putting yourself in a position to do some pressure defense, turn them over, and get some easy baskets. That's what I really think the task is right now for Racine Case. Case not having a good third quarter, only 12 points, as what was a four-point deficit becomes a 13-point deficit. And the Raiders of Sheboygan North, who have been very impressive all year long, 23-1. and Their only loss was to Wauwatosa East in overtime, 87-84. That was relatively early on in the season. Interestingly enough, now, he, Coach Desitel starting the fourth quarter, and he's keeping Nathan Schremeyer on the bench. They didn't hurt with him out of there with that nice run at the end. And Dahmer picks up some loose change. 68-53. Butler comes back in and scores. Carlos Butler, who's had the foul problems. Again, setting up some pressure here. Inside, nobody had Ozapowski. Big mismatch that time. Carlos Butler can't guard Adam. I don't think anybody was guarding Adam that one. Well, he was the closest. <laughs> no foul on the missed shot. Again, you see what that height did. He had to adjust his shot once he got in there pretty deep. That's a foul away from the ball on Jay Hearn in the corner. That's a sign of frustration by the Eagles. Well, it's good defense, and Jay pushed off because he was guarded so well. Racine Case, a real surprise to be here, not only in the state tournament, but in the state semifinals. Finished in fourth place in the Big Nine Conference. But in the first game of the tournament, they beat tri-champion Kenosha Tremper 72-65. 
And even though they lost twice to Racine Park in the regular season, they beat Racine Park in the sectional semi. So they've really come on, and we've seen some of that fine play, especially yesterday when they upset Nicolet. And right now they've got their work cut out for them as they are down 17. But they have their starters in there, and it's a never-say-die group. That shot from Hearn, the fall away is short. Azapowski, good defense. And Schmidt ahead to Boko. As it knocked away, but comes right back and scores. Really concentrated and stayed with it. It was a good clean block, but he knew where the ball was, and he grabbed it again. 18 points, and the biggest margin of the game is 19. 74 to 55. It's 18 for Boko, and he's pretty much the difference. As Sheboygan North in control. We'll be back with more after these messages from our statewide sponsors, Rural Insurance and Menards. This is your WIAA Network Station. Division One semifinal, Sheboygan North leading by 19 over Racine Case, and this has been the pattern for the Golden Ra Raiders, ranked number one. And their win over Green Bay East, a almost doubling of the score in the second half. Well, Racine has to make a run right here. I think it's crucial in the next two and a half minutes to try and cut this to at least 10. 29 to 14, they've doubled up. Butler rebounds his own shot. Great effort, nice jumping ability. Now they've got the three on two again. Schmidt all the way, but he was fouled. Butler grabbed the arm as he was going in. Sheboygan doesn't give you much of a chance to celebrate a good play because they come right back so quickly that you have got to make the transition to defense, otherwise you're gonna get burned. And Carlos Butler called for his fifth personal foul, and he's out with 11 points, averaging 14 a game on the season. Carlos never really got into the flow of things because of those fouls. Well, that, that makes you play tentative sometimes, and you just can't play your usually aggressive game. Coach Bob Hayes has given uh, 30 seconds or a minute to put a substitute in. I believe he has a minute, Jim. Excuse me, kid. He's talking to Deontay Pruitt, and Deontay will come in. We've got 5.58 remaining here, 74.57. Sheboygan North in their sixth trip in the last 10 years to the state tournament looking to move into the championship game. The Golden Raiders have been very impressive all season long and are showing why tonight. Mark Schmidt can't get it to go. They obviously with their record don't have too many bad spurts. <laughs> Besides being an outstanding basketball player, Mark Schmidt is a senior class officer. It's quite an honor in a school as large as Sheboygan North, 1450. And Nathan Schremeyer still has not returned, Kent. No. Evan had to bring him in. Along the lane to Scott, fouled from behind. Again, as you referred to, that, that's a nice luxury to have a 6'7 kid who could just step right in there if your other big guy gets in trouble. Schmidt called for the personal, sending Mike Scott to the line. And here's an opportunity to put some points on the board and set up a full court pressure defensive situation. Need it badly. Once you shoot free throws with your legs, my guess is the Eagles' legs are getting a little tired right now. Well, and when they do get tired, you gotta bend them just a little bit deeper. Can't get the second one to go. Pass is deflected, Bo called to Renzelman. Great fake, too strong. Five thirty-five remaining. Eagles still have a chance, but they're going to have to convert on just about every trip down. Well, they are, and Sheboygan North is such a nice job getting back into defensive transition that you don't get too many easy ones. Scott doesn't get it to roll. And back come the Raiders. Schmidt right through traffic, dishes off, Azapowski. 
Mark's having a fine, fine game. And that's what you expect out of seniors. Well, that's what the Sheboygan North team, a team of seniors. Shots are short. Dahmer the rebound. And here comes Schmidt again, right through traffic. Fouled by Abdullah. When he gets all that defensive attention, all that really creates is people open in front of him. And he usually gets the ball to him. And he likes to take that position right at the center of the court. Obviously, gives him options both sides. Smart play. Very smart play. Mark had 18 points in the win over Fond du Lac. An impressive win. And there's an impressive rebound. Adam Ozapowski. He now has 15. That offensive putback, that not only hurts you on the scoreboard, but psychologically you work so hard and the, the, the bigger, taller player gets the ball and puts it back up. That, that's just tough to overcome. Four thirty remaining. And suddenly, not suddenly, but gradually, and I think of the word that Tom Desitel used yesterday, relentless. That's what our team is, relentless, relentlessly. North has worked out to a 22-point margin. And again, I think it's about time now that Racine will pull out of this zone and play some man-for-man. -man. They're still trapping out of it, but I think they got to go out there and pressure every player with or without the ball. Schmidt penetrates. Goes up in the air, wasn't sure what he's going to do with it, and it's a turnover. Almost a great cap to a great pass. That one almost made the highlight film. Abdullah, the foul right in front of us here. Excuse me, uh, Pruitt. Deontay Pruitt on the foul. A superb ability just to get a hold of this lob pass here. Would you like one scoop or two scoops, Ken? <laughs> Once again, Mark Schmidt at the line. He's been there a lot tonight, hasn't he? He has. He's got 12 points. Seems like we're calling his name. This time he puts the first one through. And again, that's usually in a game when you're ahead, your best ball handler and the guy who runs the show for you, that's where he ends up most of the time. That's the way you want it. 80 to 57. Boy, when it came up empty for the Eagles, it came up empty severely. Boy, it really did. They just, they didn't close the door. They slammed the door. Schmidt all the way. Slam! Good night. Put that one on the highlight tape. And the Raiders will get it back. Let's take a look at this one again. He's going full speed behind the back dribble. Up, up, and away. Well, Mark Schmidt will get a rest. He deserves it. And again, the score one time in this game was 55-51. And that was the takeoff point. They had a clear runway tonight for this takeoff. <laughs> they come right back at you. Richter, Bokal, foul, score. When it rains, it pours, and it's just a storm right now as far as we're seeing case is concerned. Oh, there's a storm inside and outside. 85-57. Last time a team got up into triple figures here at the state tournament. Well, you can see why they are so dangerous. They score so quickly. We've got a timeout. 3.16 to go in the fourth. Sheboygan North looking like the number one team in the state. We'll be back with more after we hear from our statewide sponsors, Marshfield Clinic and the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. This is your WIAA Network Station. Sheboygan North has blown it out to a 28-point margin. 
and they are in the midst of a run of 30 points for Sheboygan North to just six for Racine Case. Midway in the third quarter was a 55-51 game, and then it was whoosh. And since then, the Raiders have taken off. Score a lot and score quickly. We have uh, reserves into the game now for the Eagles with 3.16 to go. Boko's free throw is no good. Dahmer tracks it down in the corner. And the Raiders will keep it. Now we'll see four substitutes for Sheboygan North. If Coach Desitel wants to have a name for his offensive approach to this game, I think maybe it'd be called a blitz offense. <laughs> Well, he has called it a total attack system. I think that's being kind. They just, they just go at you in so many different ways. From the corner, shot a little bit off in the lane, scoring and foul. Matt Mueller. Matt's a 6'5 junior. He picks the ball off the floor and goes up strong. There's not going to be much of a drop-off next year, Ken. Well, the interesting thing about Sheboygan North, Bill, is that the top nine players, and that's pretty much what they play, are all seniors. But again, when you got a 6'5 junior, that does something so impressive right off the bat like that when he steps on the floor in a state tournament game. You know he's going to help you next year. Well, the well has not been dry for Sheboygan North. Tom Desitel in his 16th year has a team that's gone 45-2 and two in the last two seasons. Nice drive and a hoop by Jeremy Wright for Racine Case. 237, that's going to be a travel before the contact was made. Again, I think one of the things now that the Case kids have to do is just play for their personal pride and their team pride and... and don't let this get to the century mark. Well, that means playing a little defense. There's a pass right into one of the players' faces. Kevin Malkarek didn't have his arms up and took that one right in the face. Well, the reason he didn't have his arms up is he was held. Well, Bill Graff, Sheboygan North, I can see why they've been ranked number one all season. Well, you know, last night I wasn't overly impressed. I, I thought that they did some things that uh, exposed some weaknesses, but tonight they, they really have convinced me that they very realistically are the number one team in the state, and we'll find out because they're taking one giant step to proving it tomorrow night. First, they'll be playing the winner of the second game coming up tonight. That'll be Madison West and Milwaukee Washington. Madison West, the defending state champions, Milwaukee Washington like Sheboygan North, a regular teams here at the state tournament. Free throws converted, 88-61. Case staying in the man-to-man -man defense. Interestingly enough, Ken Washington is ranked number two in the state, so we could have a real showdown in a couple of different divisions here this weekend. Nice pass in the lane. Score to Greg Aldrich. Everybody's having fun for Sheboygan. Well, it's been that kind of a night, but it didn't look like it would be that way in the middle of the third quarter. Ryan Thompson's shot is well off. Well, again, for a Racine case, it's always... A great sign when your team can make it through to the state tournament. <laughs> Impressive drive there for David Wick. Well, he's one of the seniors. Well, and again, I think the people in Racine have to remember, hey, don't look at this game alone. Look at the overall season, and they can be very proud of their accomplishments. They put it together at the right time and got to the state tournament experience. This is a dream. Not too many high school athletes experience that. That's absolutely right, and uh, Case has only done it two other years, and in their win yesterday over Nicolet, in their third appearance in state, able to get their first state tournament victory ever. They had been winless in two previous appearances, and 
the win yesterday made them one and two and now with the loss they'll be one and three on the other side of the coin Sheboygan North who made their first appearance back in 1984 with this win tonight will improve their record to seven and four in state tournament play Deion Harris makes that free throw We've got a 92 63 game down to 123 in the lane David Wick again pick up the, the garbage or the loose change and turn it into a basket now do you think the Eagles players are thinking about not letting it get to be a hundred well I'm I'm sure if they've looked at glanced at the scoreboard they're thinking about it but right now they just got to play for respect and pride I hope you can stay with us the second game should be exciting Madison West yesterday a winner over Milwaukee Bayview Milwaukee Washington a winner last night over Stevens Point. So we've got uh, seven of the eight finalists now set for championship Saturday. Earlier today, Catsville, a winner over South Shore, and Wasaki beat Albany. And then in Division Two, it was Rice Lake, a winner over Mayville, and Baraboo beating Seymour. So Baraboo and Rice Lake tomorrow evening. Tomorrow afternoon in Division Four, it's Catsville and Wasaki. And tomorrow in the second game in Division Three, it's St. Croix Falls and Auburndale. We have some great state championship games set up for tomorrow. Rebound tracked down for the Raiders. The WIAA State Tournament is brought to you statewide by the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and by the people who produce milk, the dairy farm families of Wisconsin. Milk, the official beverage of the WIAA Games. Coach Bob Hayes talking to his players. You don't know what exactly he's saying, Bill, but you know it's, it's got to be in the direction of Hayes. Don't carry your head down low. Yeah, I agree. It, it's been a positive season for them, and the state tournament is a, the most positive experience that you can go through. On the other hand, here's Sheboygan North had a nice luxury, and Nathan Schreinmayer set out for about a quarter and a half, so he should be raring to go tomorrow on that big one. In the lane, Wick gets the rebound and is fouled. That's a real good point, Bill. You know, this is the first time all season that any of these teams will play when they get into the Division I championship game, will play in a game three days in a row. Well, three days in a row and on a college floor, which is 10 feet longer than a high school floor. So you put all those factors together, and it's a different experience. Well, plus the excitement of coming down here and in most cases uh, not sleeping in your own bed. Staying at a, at a hotel, lots of excitement. And 10,000 eyeballs watching you. <laughs> Make that 20,000. Everybody's got two. Final 35 seconds. Sheboygan North. Closing out the win here over Racine Case. There's a pass that's too much. Even the reserves for the Golden Raiders like to run. It's an aggressive style of basketball. We've got 28 seconds to go. Sheboygan North in the tournament trail has been impressive in wins over Appleton East. Winning by 34 over the ninth ranked team in the state. By 20 over Fond du Lac, the number four team in the state. Beating Green Bay East for the third time by 21 points. And winning here over upstart Racine Case. And will do it in very impressive fashion in the 30-point vicinity. As we're down into the final 15 seconds here of this Division I semifinal. Well, March Madness is coming to an end for the Racine Case Eagles. And again, great season, Eagles. And it was more like a little magic than madness. And that does it. The final score, Sheboygan North, 95. And Racine Case, 65. Sheboygan North improves the 24 and 1 and move into the Division 1 state championship game tomorrow at about 8.15. They'll be back with the coach's interview, highlights, and statistics. But first, a word from our local stations. This is your WIAA network station. Well, call it a blitz or call it a total attack system. Tom Desitel from Sheboygan North has his team playing very, very well this year. A 30-point winner over the Eagles of Racine Case. 
Tom Desitel is across the court right now, and let's go across to our Chris Roth for that interview. All right, thanks very much, Ken, and the stats are in, and I can't think there would be much wrong with those statistics tonight, Tom. Well, I don't, I don't know. Last night I wasn't real pleased. Yesterday I wasn't real pleased, and I told our kids we're back, and we're in a bad mood. I wasn't in a good mood. I didn't like the way our, our good players played yesterday. I asked them to step it up. At halftime, they still hadn't done it, but in the second half, they did. Nathan uh, kind of took over there until he got in foul trouble, and then after he left, Ozapowski and Dahmer were just awesome. Mark Schmidt played, well, you know Mark Schmidt. Sure, he played real well. You talk about the run to close it out. At one point in the third quarter, it was 55 to 51, so you close it out with a 40 to 14 run. Defense, offense, what was the key to that? Well, I think rebounding and defense, and uh, uh, we really didn't hit many threes today. Three out of 17 from threes. Uh, so we were relentless on the boards. We got a lot of easy shots. Uh, they took some chances, and, and we punished them, you know. Talking to you Wednesday, you told us how focused this team was. You've been ranked number one. That's a mantle that they've had to carry all year. Now you're in the championship game. Well, that's right. We're pretty happy about that. Uh, we made a breakthrough. Uh, we asked the kids, hey, tonight you guys can make a breakthrough. And then uh, let's take our chances from there. That's what we wanted to wanted to get. But it's a three-day tournament. We can't get too excited over this. That's right. The only winner is the one who wins three. That's what you said yesterday. Congratulations, Tom. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, thank you. Okay. Tom Desitel, the winning head coach from Sheboygan North. And boy, were they impressive as they head to the championship game tomorrow night. Now let's go back across the court for the highlights and the statistics. Ken and Bill. Gentlemen. Very good, Chris. Thank you. And that is interesting. Chris talked about that being number one in the state and playing with that all the way through. There's a lot of pressure just to get to that state championship game. Well, there really is. This is a giant step, obviously, but everywhere along the way, everybody gives you their best shot night in and night out. And Sheboygan North has responded very, very impressively this season. Well, they wore down Racine Case. We'll take a look at the highlights now, and we'll see that the field goal was shooting in the second half was probably pretty good based on the number of slams. This was a nice pass from Mark Schmidt to Nathan Schreemeyer for a dunk. And Schmidt showed that he can uh, do it himself as he picked Yusuf Abdullah's pocket. Very nice. Poetry in motion. You were impressed by this move by Mike Scott, who adjusted the shot in the air. And that was in the third quarter when Case was still in it. But uh, then they went on a 30 to 6 run, did North. Ozapowski got loose for a slam. Nice power move there. Good big man move. And Schmidt behind the back to get one more. And not only is it the offense that's impressive as Sheboygan North uh, hits on 55%. 62% from the free throw line, but they do a pretty good job in holding down Racine Case. Pretty good job defensively. Yes, they did, and the rebounds were very close at the end of the first half, but in the second half, there's a 16 differential there. They just really pounded the boards. And let Case have very few second shots. Turnovers end up pretty even. Scoring-wise, Case led by Jay Hearn with 15 and J.R. Smith with 16. And Bokal with 20, Schreemeyer 16 and eight boards, Schmidt with 16, and Ozapowski off the bench. All-conference honorable mention, 15 points, and uh, that's, again, a luxury to have as we keep uh, everybody pretty busy. Tough for us to call the game, and tough for statistician Don Kerr to handle it, and now Sheboygan North can sit back and look at this game and uh, kind of enjoy it right now. Well, they'll be able to celebrate for a few hours, but they'll know then who they have to play and start going over the scouting reports and the to match us because they play man-for-man -man defense. I think it's going to be a heck of a state championship game tomorrow. That should be interesting all the way around.